I've always loved working, I love what I do, I love being a journalist, and I knew I wanted to carry on working, but somehow that traditional career path of climbing a ladder just didn't quite work for me. And I, I, I knew in my gut that it didn't quite work for me, but it was very hard to find other people to share that experience with, especially in a town like Washington, D.C., where you're meant to want to work 70 hours a week, never sleep, always be on your game always want to aim for the very top of everything. And um, it, was, it was hard to find somebody that had the right sensibility. And then I met Claire Shipman. And the two of us used to have these kind of whispered conversations at the sides of press conferences or Washington events. And we suddenly realized that we shared a sensibility. And it was a sensibility that was, we really love what we do. We want to carry on working. But somehow we don't want to kill ourselves and kill our family lives in the process. We want to find a way to get the balance right. And we would call each other up with kind of career advice on a sort of, you know, odd twist on the old boys network. And often that career advice was sort of counterintuitive. I remember one particular time when um, ABC News had offered me a job as their White House correspondent. And my agent was very keen that I should take this job. He said to me, Catty, you know, ABC has never had foreigners stand. It's not something that speaks like you do. Um, standing in front of the White House, you know, talking about presidential politics. And you'd be mad not to take this job. And all of my colleagues were saying to me, Catty, you've got to take this job. You know, this is, you know, the big new step in your career. ABC would ring me up and say, you know, this is going to launch you in America as if I was some kind of rocket that needed a fuel blast or something. And, all the time I was hearing this advice, and I kept hearing and I kept hearing it, but in my gut, it made me feel so sick. And I kept thinking, if I take this job, I will be in the White House at five o'clock in the morning. I will, end. I will never get any holiday. All of that balance that I have fought so hard to get in my life, I'm gonna to have to say goodbye to it. And these are very competitive news organizations. And I would be up against people who were prepared to do kind of 60, 70 hours a week, have no family life, um, and you know, really completely dedicate themselves to their careers. So I sort of started asking around, and you know, everybody said, yeah, of course, this is a no-brainer, you've got to take this job. And then I remember calling up Claire, who I didn't know very well at the time, um, but I remember calling her up, and she worked for ABC News, and saying to Claire, you know, what do you think? Should I take this job? Everyone says I should take it. And Claire said to me, you'd be crazy. And it was a real relief to find somebody who, who was honest about the same kinds of concerns that I had. And so that was when we really started thinking, you know what, we need to, to talk about this publicly. Because we found that amongst ourselves, and they're talking to some of our women friends, and particularly women friends that had families, there was this kind of secret that we all had, these kind of quiet conversations that we thought we shouldn't make public about how we did want to work, but we also wanted to have time for our families, and we wanted to be able to say we wanted time for our families without kind of everyone writing us off or putting us on the mummy track or saying that we weren't ambitious enough or that we were hopeless or we're never going to get anywhere or our bosses feeling they shouldn't have invested in us. And that was why we started writing Women on It. It was really our personal story.